Final Four, what a snore. And for folks in Hockey Town, the only four that matters is their new awesome foursome. That's right, Motown wanted Mo Cups, so the Wheeling Wings went Dylan. Hello, Chelio, Clark, Bowie, and Ranford. Call them repeat favorites now, baby. Because with a lineup like this, you don't have to be Einstein to figure out who's got the fire power. However, the Broad Street Boys have some brand new bullies of their own. Leclerc and now a little Baruby Flair. The Red Wings better beware. It's a rematch of last Sunday's playoff-like clash. And folks, the sequel is sure to be a smash. Flyers, Red Wings, coming at you. The defending champs were loaded up to defend an all-star defenseman from Chicago, an all-star left wing from Tampa, a former cup winner just to be their backup goalie. For the second straight Sunday, the Red Wings face a team that also beefed up literally. Today, it's in Detroit at sold out Joe Louis Arena, the Philadelphia Flyers and the Detroit Red Wings. Hi, everybody. Along with John Davidson, I'm Mike Emmerich. The Flyers come in having righted the ship. They've won their last three, but today they don't have their captain. He's been suspended for two games for the Peter Nedved incident yesterday afternoon, and with Eric Lindros out of the lineup, he was able to skate this morning, get himself a good workout in. He'll miss the two games. Rod Brindamore now moves in to play on a line with John LeClaire for Detroit this afternoon going against the Red Wings. Listen, Lindros plays in the neighborhood 23, 24 minutes. Power play, penalty kill, the other team's best players. He's a hitter. He's their best face-off guy. He'll be missed, so the Flyers are going to go with seven defensemen and short one forward. About 25 years ago, and now General Manager Bob Clark played for this team, they were known not only for being a good team, but for registering a lot of penalty minutes. They beefed up a little bit here for the home stretch. They did. They added Craig Berube, who used to be a Philadelphia player. He was over from Washington. McCarthy moves up from Tampa Bay. McCarthy was an assistant captain down there. These two guys are rugged guys who skate pretty well. They know their role. When they're on the uh, road, they can mix things up. When they're at home, if the big players, their best players, are being bothered, they'll protect them. It's kind of like old Flyer hockey's back. Yesterday in, this, in the uh, Philadelphia, there was a lot of passion in the building in their win over the Flyers. And they uh, expect to play with that type of passion now the rest of the way during the regular season. Well, those four moves that the Red Wings made have helped them a good deal. It certainly made a contagious atmosphere here in Detroit where they've won two in a row already. 55 years of experience in four guys and five total championships with them, too. Well, you think of the additions that Detroit made. They're, they're veteran players, Mike, and they should be able to step in and immediately have a, a, a fit for this team. They shouldn't be re a researching chemistry. But Chelios, in this game this afternoon, will play with Aaron Ward, it looks like, on the blue line. That'll be his third different defense partner in the three games he's been here. So Scotty Bowman is experimenting. Getting Chelios and Wendell Clark, who will be in the lineup, adds experience, adds toughness, adds just about everything you're looking for. Wolf Samuelson is not playing because of the fractured foot, but he'll be ready for the playoffs. Bill Ranford, the backup goaltender for today, adds a ton of experience, too. And I think Detroit just changed the mood of the Red Wing fans here in Detroit during the last day before the tread deadline, deadline expired. They, they just now are in the mood for the playoffs. They can hardly wait here in Detroit. Well, there are tons of stars on both these teams, some of them playing, some of them not, but we've got enough healthy guys to go around. We'll be back for the start of our exciting tilt here this afternoon. For the second straight Sunday, it's the Philadelphia Flyers and the Detroit Ring Red Wings, this time from Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. day than usual in Detroit on the banks of the Detroit River Joe Lewis Arena the 124th consecutive game which will be a sellout 19,983 they were selling out when the team wasn't winning Stanley Cup championships but the waiting list to get in here is huge now and it's going to be even huger with the addition of the players from this past week Detroit born John Van Beesbrook who used to crowd into standing room here as a youth in his old town with a team that hasn't won here in ten and a half years the Philadelphia Flyers at the other end of the ice it's Chris Osgood a 30 win season and he is two career wins away from second in all time Red Wing history only Terry Sawchuck has more career wins with Detroit Roger Nielsen with the colorful tie. Those of you who are watching on a portable black and white set, we're just <laughs> sorry. And William Scott Bowman. 
with the rebuilt knee and the revitalized health and enthusiasm as usual coaching these Detroit Red Wings. Paul Dvorsky's in charge of the game with Gerard Gauthier and Stefan Provo, a couple of linesmen from Montreal. The video replay official is Matt Pavlich. 39 years in the NHL, a lot of experience there. When you study referees, Paul Dvorsky's the type of referee that generally lets, generally lets things go. You term him a liberal referee, so if this game gets rather passionate, I would think he'll let them get after one another a little bit. And big Sandy McCarthy starts. Malpe's been moved to the left wing. Number 18 to go opposite McCarthy here as the game begins. Malpe can play right wing, left wing, and Scotty Bowman likes to move him around to go opposite physical people on the other team. An anti-missile missile, you would say? Yeah, I think so. And I think he tries to get Malpe to talk players on the other team into taking penalties. Get a hand pass that stops the clock 11 seconds in. Again, Eric Lindros not in this game. He's been suspended for two games. Eric met with the writers from Philadelphia prior to game time this afternoon <laughs> before they could even ask a question. He said, well, there goes the Lady Bing. <laughs> now, I had talked to Eric uh, probably two hours prior to game time, and he, he was a little angry. He was upset, but it was better that he vented his anger at that time and uh, tried to get over it. Eric just wants to play. He knows this is a big game. His parents have driven down from Canada to watch it, and he's not in the lineup. So this should be a good test here, I would think, for both clubs. McCarthy is off now, and Michael Renberg on that side had his stick pulled away by Malfi, the shove by Malfi. Meanwhile, the puck taken by Rod Brindamore chipped it on for Leclerc, and it's flown to center ice where Malfi wants to turn back. Spirited it back in deep. Tarion goes back to play. Tarion, along with Steve Duchesne, one of the late pickups by the Flyers. A forehander by Malfi is blocked aside by Van Beesbrook and turned along for control by John Leclerc. Malfi already making an impression no. in this game. McCarthy, he went at. And then he went at Renberg, and then he swiped the puck from Terrian. Oh, a drive by Leclerc right into the pad of Chris Osgood. Puck trickled along for a tip that came back to Duchesne, angled it back. Steve Duchesne, very offensive-minded, will be a part of this power play. Fed back across now for control by Wendell Clark. Last Sunday, we mentioned of Hockey News' top 50 active players. There were 10 in the game. This week, there are 11 with the addition of Chelios. Eight All-Stars on this Detroit team alone. Eight guys. Back to get this is Ward. Ward pitched it back off the wall. Kept alive there by Mark Bureau, but then he lost. Wendell Clark tried for Fedorov, but instead got no! Dan McGillis. Away from Chelios for the setup by Osgood. Flyers lost one of 24, then they won only two of 14. Detroit has had its stretches this year, too. This thrown back in by Valeri Zelopukin. It's interesting. Chelios on the ice with Aaron Ward. It's the third different defense partner Chelios has had in three games. Scotty Bowman is experimenting. I think he's trying to figure out who will be the best fit with who. He started with Lidstrom in the first game, and then he had McCowan in the second game. And in this one, it's Ward. So uh, Scotty Bowman experimenting. The tradition in Chicago was Chelios at least 30 minutes most time. How much do you think he'll get here? Probably 23 or 24 minutes. I don't think you'll see those 40-minute games anymore. Bad by Kozlov. Quick shot is kicked away by the defense of Luke Richardson as LaPointe let it go. Flip back away from Carl Dykhaus, and it's Richardson jamming it the other way for Sandy McCarthy. Scotty Bowman had certain lines during warm-up before the game. He changed them completely to start this one. He had Wendell Clark on left wing with Larry Onoff. The game starts and Kozlov's there, so it's... A little bit of deception by both teams coaches. Now, Roger Nielsen usually has the corner on that market, but I think Scotty's out Rogered Roger. Played along by Kozlov and banked around behind. <laughs> Heading to this is Rod Brindamore. Oh, he got out of the way of the freight train. Named LaPointe is banked back up for rugged Sandy McCarthy. Handed on for a little trickler from Zelopukin, who had two goals yesterday. But this is Kozlov's puck to play. Kozlov, wrist shot! And it's held by Van Beesbrook. 3-0-2 gone. First period at Joe Louis Arena. Go score. Our Fox Sports cameras are at Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. Chris Chelios came out for the warm-up on Wednesday and took a look up at the message board, and they had him live. He backed up a little bit just to see what the jersey looked like <laughs> on and then sort of smiled and stepped out. Did he ever get an ovation for his first shift? The shot by Lidstrom went wide. Played along by Tertichny. Played back on now by Rod Brindamore and dumped back in deep. 
Around to get it is Lidstrom. Good crunch on him and a centering pass from Volpot. It's brought back out again by Maltby. Wristed back in and boy, some tussling between Maltby and one of the players. Here's a chance for Iserman moving in back. Uh, Van Beesbrook bailed himself out. He's the one that created the turnover. Lindstrom rolls it around behind, taken by Iserman there. Stood up by the checking of Burt and worked back along the wall for Shanahan off the stick of Iserman. And so to get it is Brindamore. Brindamore banged into by Maltby. Puck fed along away from Bopot. Rister by Lindstrom went just wide. Larry Murphy holds. Throws one to the side of the net that missed for Shanahan. That one nubbed back out, and so Lidstrom has to retreat. Four minutes gone, first period. We have no score in the game, and the fans applauding the attack of Detroit here. Three shots to one in the game for the Red Wings. Lidstrom with a pass, deflected right on goal, played by Van Beesbrook, and with a big goal stick, he just put it off the paddle and back as far as Chelios. Chelios pursued, played it back ahead, and it's dragged in by Renberg on an offside. Hey, let's check in with Susie Kohlberg. Doc, we've got Kings of Colorado. The Lanch working the puck. Joe Sackett goes across the ice to Theo Fleury. The one time on his 35th of the season, he has a 14-game toy streak going. You think Colorado wants to send a message to Detroit? I think Dallas wanted to send one to Detroit as well. Five goals and six games for Fleury, playing for the Avalanche. A line there of Sackett, Fleury, and Hayduk, one of the better rookies in the game. So, Colorado with a good start in that one. Kind of interesting, Nick Lidstrom seemed to be troubled by something over at the bench. Colorado gunning for their seventh win in ten games, so they picked it up at just the right time. Sergei Fedorov brings it on for Detroit. He's been hot lately, feeds it to the back for his Chelios toss that is blocked off and started out to the Flyers. Michael Renberg bringing it on. Renberg trying to pick his way through. Backhander went wide off the stick of Chelios. Centering attempt fails, and the Red Wings take over, and an outlet pass misfires for Fedorov and goes back for an icing touch-up. Steve Duchesne takes care of that, and the clock stopped with 15.08 to go in the first period. Chris Chelios has come here from the Chicago Blackhawks. He was with them for nine years, and now transitioned in his game a new team. You know, I have no idea where Sergei Fedorov or you know, Igor Larionov is pretty consistent when they use that breakout up the middle, but, you know, the Kozlov, these guys are wheeling, and it's, I mean, it's like playing with the Russian Red Army sometimes, but. You know, you get used to it. I'm, you know, I'm not so used to handling the puck as well. Puck control here is big here. They don't want you to dump the puck, and they don't want you to give the puck away in a neutral zone. They want you to control it. You know, he talked to Jellios. I said, what about the left wing lock defensively? He said, oh, that's no problem. Then he went into the discussion about how difficult it is to read Detroit when he has the puck where they're going. And he's still got a few games left prior to the end of the season to learn the offensive system more so than the defensive system for the Red Wings. You can learn it mostly here because the Red Wings have only three road games left, and they won't be traveling much to get to any of them. One of those, one of those games in Chicago? Yeah, and one of those games this coming week is with Chicago here on Friday. He has said that especially that last game will be a very emotional experience for him going back to his hometown, really. This one slipped to the front and that knife back out. I said, Chris, they had a great Greek town here in Detroit. I said they had a pretty good one in Chicago, too. <laughs> and there's a great chili place <laughs> on yeah. Madison Street in Chicago that belongs to him. On back now is Carl Dykhouse. Hands on to Richardson. Keith Richardson just turned 30. Cody Hall played this one back down, and Matthew Dandino is matched up with Jamie McCowan. Dandino with a pass went away from McCowan, grabbed there and thrown back in by Sandy McCarthy. The last shift was the first shift for the fourth line for Detroit. It looks like Scotty Bowman is trying to keep Iserman opposite Brindberg as much or opposite uh, Brindamore. My apologies. Brindamore as much as possible. This is McCowan pitching it back in. Dan McGillis goes to play that one. Run into Brindamore, able to send it on for Tertichny. Sooner or later, I think McCarthy and the point may bump into one another. They've been opposite each other a lot. This time, big McCarthy's opposite Wendell Clark. Roger Nielsen was telling me a story. Now, he didn't coach the game last Sunday when the Flyers and the Red Wings met because he was suspended. He was up top. But he heard a story about in the locker room where the players banter about the other team prior to the game. And the players in the Philly locker room were saying, got to watch that McCarthy. He's, he, he, or that uh, LaPointe. He's a real strong guy, and he likes to bump, and he hits hard. you got to watch for him and make sure he doesn't grind us too much because LaPointe is a hitter, and he's a strong guy. McCarthy stood up in the locker room and said, he's not going to touch anybody. 
takes that back down. <laughs> and this happens in every locker room, but that's what the impact is of McCarthy for his teammates. And they've been opposite each other now twice on shifts here in the first period, but haven't bumped into each other just yet. You sense the Flyers are five to ten pounds heavier and an inch taller with the addition of these two guys, McCarthy and Berube? That's the idea of getting those two particular players. They don't want Lindros or LeClaire or any of those type of players scrapping. You know, Mark Recchi's not in the lineup because of his concussion. He's not a big guy, so they want protection. It's insurance. And that's Flyer hockey from years past, isn't it? Yeah, and, and with Detroit, you'd have to think they feel they're a little faster and a little more experienced than they were because of all the experience they got in just a span of 24 hours. And a whole lot better in their own zone. Oh, here's the penalty upcoming, Mike. First one of the day, and Paul Dvorsky has spotted a flyer, so the Red Wings are going to get the first power play of the afternoon when we come back. Uh, the flyer there is... Craig Berube, you're going to see Berube reach out, get the stick between the legs, and pull down Larry Murphy. Remember I said that uh, the referee, Paul Dvorsky, is a very liberal referee? Uh, a tough call there, but Berube's in the box, and the Red Wings on the power play. Minutes 172 and 173 for the man known as the Chief, Craig Berube. Eiserman beats to Clark, gets it on back to Lipstrom, and a shot is kicked aside by Terrian. Moving in is Chelios. Chelios fed, shot ahead, a shot! Saved by Ben Beesbrook. Now, who shoots a puck better off the pass than Shanahan? Good shot, good save. Wendell Clark had 11 power play goals playing in Tampa Bay. He works the first unit here on the power play. Shanahan last Sunday with two goals and an assist. Here he comes again with a shot that's snuffed out by the defense. Luke Richardson blocked that one. Fed back along and sent flying as Richardson by Wendell Clark. Kept to the outside. Lidstrom with it there. Gives back over to Chelios. Chelios' pass is tipped back out to neutralize as reaching it was Mark Bureau. Iserman and Lidstrom play a little catch. It's shaken through to Iserman again. Iserman looks over the traffic on this power play that's been hot lately. Finesse moved to the front, and Dykehouse able to knock it away and clear it down. The Red Wings are five for their last 18 power play opportunities. That's terrific. Iserman moved up front before Chelios was here. He was moved up back to the point quite a bit. Larry Murphy has started the power play. Now he's on for the second unit. A follow-up from Larry Murphy. Murphy got it across. Larry on off. Fire! and a save rebound sent off of Ben Beesbrook in the back of the net by Kozlov to the outside Larry on off Murphy has shot double score the Flyers are asking whether it was knocked in by a high stick I don't think it was Mike I'll tell you you see what Detroit looks like now with the addition of Clark and Chelios they have two power play units the first unit goes out there doesn't score the second unit steps on the ice and bang now, Larry Murphy's going to set up right up here, directly in front of Van Beesbrook for the shot. See, here he comes. Moves right across. Here comes in front of the net, the rebound in the air, and it slapped out of the air. It was not crossbar high, and it should be 1-0 Red Wings. Now, you're going to see Kozlov move to the front here, and he just bats it right out of midair. He's out of the goal crease. That should be a legitimate goal. I believe they're waiting for the call down to make sure from upstairs. But there's no reason why that shouldn't be allowed. It's batted in, butted in, right out of midair by Kozlov, who's been on a a terror for the Red Wings in the second half of the season. one nothing to Detroit. The neutral zone penalty hurt the Flyers. Kozlov's 25th at 831 on the Berube minor. And so the Red Wings have struck early on the power play and lead one zip. Great for next Sunday as well. Detroit and Dallas. Dallas with 102 points leading the league. And then the other alternative on Fox is the Rangers and New Jersey. Battle of the Hudson, two teams separated by just five miles and by a lot of tradition and a lot of anger and hostility over the years, too. Here is Ward with a toss that is cut off and worked back out by Duchesne. On now for Michael Renberg. Eiserman is five out of five in winning faceoff today. And if Lindros was in the lineup, it might not be a, such a one-sided number. The other thing that we've seen so far, we've just played over nine minutes of the first period. We're not seeing the Flyers get that real good forecheck that they're known for. The Flyers team, when it's a team on top of its game, it's forecheck, forecheck. Forecheck and bang and crash and create turnovers down low. Detroit's not had any problems at all in their zone. They've been outshot 7-1 to this point. These Have guys, these I'm sorry, John. These guys spent a lot of time together this week, and it wasn't necessarily on yeah. hockey games. So a group out of Calgary, Alberta, in Western Canada, stopped by Philadelphia and uh, went through a 
seminar with the players where the players learned about themselves and about their own personalities and problem solving with different personalities put together and the biggest thing that came out of it was how tight the flyers are as a team even though they've had a rough month prior to the three game winning streak and i think the players seem to enjoy it the philadelphia american league team the phantoms have done it in the past the calgary flames have done it in the past and I understand it's a real good seminar that they go to. And it wasn't necessarily all indoors either. They went out yeah. and did some uh, some group activities, problem solving and relying on each other to solve problems out in a field, out in a forest. And the equipment manager was involved, the trainers were involved, everybody. Angled back to the corner and it's kicked back along and a good job applied by Luke Richardson. Close quarters, Thomas Holmstrom tried to play it further and it scaled around behind. Dykehouse after that and Dandeno. And the Noah Dykehouse cancel in a little shove from behind. Right. The fence don't pinch very often, but on that play, Dandenau was in deep. Halfway through the first period, the shots are 7-1 to one in favor of Detroit. Here is Draper moving in. Got it across the roof, and he on, and it's grabbed off, and then Van it deflects Beesbrook. up into the seats as Van Beesbrook was gone. Uh, he got hit by... Draper, and I don't know how Draper fell into Van Beesbrook, but it was blindside from behind, and Van Beesbrook looks like he's hurting. He didn't even see the blow coming from behind, and now everybody's getting after one another. This thing's going to heat up. This will heat up. The, the Red Wings have carried the play. They've created all the turnovers. The Flyers don't have much jump in their stride at all, and Van Beesbrook, who was looking to his left, had Draper come through the goal crease from behind him and nail him. Now, I don't know if Draper was pushed or not. We'll have to watch and see here. Here's the 2-1-1. One, one. Draper's coming down the middle, and he was pushed, and there's the bump. And now things are starting to explode a little bit on the ice. Here again is another look at it. Could Draper have stopped? There's the collision. Van Beesbrook did not expect it. Draper was helped into Van Beesbrook, there's no doubt, by one of the other players. McCarthy tried to get at somebody. Van Beesbrook is now up and appears to be okay. Some rough stuff, Mike, earlier in the corner to the left of Van Beesbrook. Dandeneau on the pinch did a good job. And the Red Wings defense don't pinch too much. Dykehouse there is hit by Holmstrom. Here comes Lankow. This is what I mean by things starting to heat up. There's the facial by Lankow to the face of Holmstrom, who's a rugged forward. Plays the boards tough. And then not long after that, there was a turnover. And the Flyers have created, or have turned the puck over a number of times here in this first period. And then not long after that, the hit on Van Beesbrook and everybody got after one another. So Dvorsky has to separate everybody and decide what's going to be called. As you see, Brenda Moore wearing the C that Lindros usually has. Now here's McCarthy. And there's Holmstrom. And there's a swat. That McCarthy, he threw a swat there. Now he wants to throw punches. You can see Holmstrom's right hand still has a glove and stick attached to it. Well, Rod, Brenda Moore is reporting in what has been handed out. Currently, there's a minor up on the Red Wings side. They have not put up a minor to the Flyers if there is one coming, yeah, which means there might be an extra, and that would probably be to Draper. Van Beesbrook is now skating around, and he was flexing both legs. He get nailed in the lower back like that. That can tighten up a little bit, but he appears to be okay. Did you see Draper and Holmstrom in the box? Do you think more goaltenders are being run despite this crease rule? You know, Mike, I didn't think very much of it, but I think recently it seems like Hoshik's been run a number of times. Here we see Van Beesbrook get bumped. Patrick Waugh made a statement recently, and of course he plays goal for Colorado. He said, you know, goaltending's never been easier. Somebody said, what do you mean by that? He says, I haven't been touched in three years. Except for, of course, the center ice here right. in this yeah. building when he got into the scrap. But uh, it, it appears to me in recent weeks, yeah, we're seeing a little more of it, and I think you'll see the league talk to the referees saying listen any bumping with goaltenders it's got to be called it's just got to be called period so Draper ends up with the extra minor and the Flyers have their first power play of this afternoon at 10 12 Draper for goaltender interference McCarthy and Holmstrom of Philadelphia and Detroit both rubbing penalties that have been one shot by the Flyers so far that was a bad angle low shot by John McClare carrying this ahead is McGillis open and ice but a pick at the line, and both players went down, and the one pick by the Flyers, LeClaire, was offside. LeClaire was trying to stay onside, going parallel along the blue line. Chelios didn't see him. He was backing up, playing the fence, and then there was the collision. Right in here. You're going to see it right there. Boom. 
If Leclerc stays on side, it's a pretty good play because Chelios would have been taken out of the play. Well, Leclerc got bumped, and a call was made for the offside. Among the players the Flyers would like to have but don't have today, Eric Lindros, of course, suspended. Mark Recchi out with a concussion, but a very eventful weekend in the Recchi household. The birth of the first child, Christina, a girl. Puck comes back to the point. It is McGillis with it. McGillis flips it back across. Angled back for Brindamore. It chipped back to McGillis once again. McGillis hands across. It's kept alive by Duchesne, but his pass is spiked down and rolled out by Lipstrom. Posting on is better off. Drops it off for Brown. Shot that went off a leg. Brindamore able to play it around behind as we're 45 seconds into this power play. Nine minutes left in the first period. Along with John Davidson, Mike Emmerich, proud to be with you on Fox's coverage of the National Hockey League from Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit today. Kept alive by Duchesne, turns it back on. Fed on back for McGillis's shot that snuffed out and laid back down the ice away from Iserman's reach. So John Van Beesbrook paddles it along and emerging with it is Duchesne. His pass misfires though. McGillis couldn't come up with it. It's sent back along on second effort by Aaron Ward. And again, Van Beesbrook. 38 left on the kill. 8.25 to go in the first. Kozlov from Murphy and Larionov. A Detroit power play goal. The only marker of the day. Pass too far. Roost. Send it back down. A shotless power play thus far. Has 22 seconds to go in. Brought on by Tertishny. Leads it ahead. Fed back on for Michael Renberg, who breezes along. Fed one in front that's cut off and just sent right back out again by Kirk Maltby. Yeah, every pass made by the Flyers in, in the Detroit zone is just being picked off. Earlier it was Lidstrom, there it was Maltby. They can't complete the pass in the offensive zone. McCowan around behind. And this one scaled up into the seats, and so play is stopped with 7.47. A big jumbo left in this first period, and it's 1-0 Detroit. So congratulations to the Reckies, Mark and Alexa, on the birth of the first child. We should mention Bo McKell Anderson is getting closer, and Eric Desjardins still out with a knee problem. The Red Wings have a ton of guys that they'd like to use but can't today because of injury. This is Burt, Detroit born. Burt slips one to the front that's tipped to the glass. Popped on down for a close in play by Bureau. Dandino roughing up his man. Bureau tried to stop run up. Osgood. There's offense off the backboards for the Flyers. Earlier we talked about the Flyers trying to work the power play. Watch Lindstrom read the play here. The Flyers will make a pass. Now they have to make the next pass to set up the offense on the power play. There's Lindstrom. And he thinks offense himself after he breaks it up. Now on the back check, still on the same power play. Watch what Maltby does. He'll read the play, come down low, take away the passing lane, bang. The Flyers couldn't make that one pass to set up the special offense. Now here at even strength bureau on the wraparound, First time in the game we've seen the Flyers get some offense off the forecheck, off the backboards. It is LaPointe locking up with Bureau. Dug out by Barubi. Lifted along by Dan Deneau and spirited out again by the Red Wings as far as center ice. Detroit has won five of the last six, seven of the last ten. They've been going pretty well. Kozlov flips around behind. You know, the Flyers, when you saw Detroit's power play with the two units, the Flyers are kind of double jeopardy. They want to play a physical game, but at the same time, they can't afford to be shorthanded with this lethal power play. Chipped around behind off Dandino. Jody Hall comes by, and Igor Larionov is up with it. Larionov for Detroit. Hands back over to McCowan, and McCowan slams it back in. Careened around. Good, healthy check put into the point by Craig Barubi, and the two of them go right back at it again. Puck held to the boards and taken by Carrion. Knife right back to the pair. Larionov on the outside back for Dandino, and that shot went high in the air to be gloved down and then tapped on by the stick of Kozlov to Larionov. So it stays in force. Larionov, a pass, pinballed on back to him, and he has to recover and neutralize and drop back further. Seven shots to two. Detroit ahead in the game. one nothing on the Slava Kozlov power play goal at 8.31. Uh, here's Holmstrom and McCarthy on the ice, Mike. The last time they were together, they got involved after Van Beesbrook was bumped. It is Holmstrom with it after Fedorov was sent flying. Burrowing in is Wendell Clark. Fed back on for Fedorov. 
Dykhouse hooked at by Fedorov. That's enough to slow the play down, and they can get the battle going again. It's turned over to Detroit. Holmstrom back for the shot by Lindstrom. Waffle boarded away by John Van Beesbrook. Brought back out now by Langkow. Damon Langkow crisscrossing. It got tangled in his equipment and has worked on to Fedorov, who swirls and hands on to Wendell Clark in a two-on-two with Holmstrom. A shot is deflected into the seat by Van Beesbrook. There's defense to offense and a great wrist shot. Earlier, Barube knew he wanted to take LaPointe, who's that big, rugged winger. Look at LaPointe. Oh, he got ready for it. Still a good hit by Barube, shoulder on shoulder. That broke up the play. Van Beesbrook had a point shot to deal with. This one from Lindstrom. This one got up a high a little bit, and Van Beesbrook just turned it to the side, got rid of the rebound. And I loved how Detroit went from defense to offense. The puck moved from Fedorov to Wendell Clark, and he can score on the wrist shot from the top of the circle. Van Beesbrook knocked the puck away with a goal stick. A good save on a great wrist shot. Offensive faceoff for Detroit. Puck angled back, though, for Dan McGillis to wrap around for John LeClaire. Just tipped back out, and it's Ward. Flyers trying to keep this line together as much as they can. Brindamore in place of Lindros with LeClaire on the left side and Renberg on the right side. Normally Jones is there, but this, this one line has been fairly consistent for the Flyers here in the first. And look how they've got Tertishny now playing the point with them, trying to find offense, Mike. Good pass by Brindamore, but Renberg just could not control and was worked on by the defense of Aaron Ward at the time. Worked on back by McGillis, and it hopped away from Osgood around to be thrown back along by Chris Chelios. Chipped to neutralize, brought back on by Maltby. Maltby is gone, and it screamed past the ear of Van Beesbrook and got the glass. Chin music. Is that one of those Bobby Hall warning oh, shots? Maybe just that was... wasn't a, a slapper. Here's one that's carried around behind by Brown and angled back off the glass. The last time Chicago and Detroit worked any kind of deal was in 1978, 21 years ago. Angled back across, and it is Sergei Fedorov to take it. Fedorov throws it back down. And play is stopped with 4.11 to go in the first period. Chris Chelios and his new team ahead one zip. Pads for legs. $1,500. Glove for hand, $400. Mask for face, $150. Having a slinky for a spine, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Official card of the NHL and fan of those who dominate. Keep your eye on Fox Sunday night from Matt Groening, creator of The Simpsons, comes a new series 1,000 years ahead of its time, introducing Futurama. Series premiere tonight right after an all-new Simpsons on Fox. 36 of the last 86 Detroit goals have been scored by one of the Russian three, either Kozlov, Larionov, or Fedorov. At one time, there was a five. Now it is just three. A chance out in front by Bureau. Blocked by Osgood. Another try. Oh, and that one pumped loose. Did it go in? No light is on. Osgood stretched his arm out at the goal line. The puck was right near his left armpit. Again, it's the Bureau line that has Jones on it and Jody Hull. And they got some offense going. As soon as this happened, Detroit now changes their defense pairing. There's the shot, one of them, and Osgood kept the stick near the second save. Now watch Osgood spread out with his left arm right across the goal line. And the puck is flipped right up along his body. It's right underneath his armpit. There it is. It comes out there underneath the armpit. And he makes two or three real good saves. Boy, did the Flyers ever control the puck in the offensive zone. That's the second good flurry they've had in this period. And both times, it was the Mark Vero line. Oh, he thought he had scored, did Jones, but he did not. Osgood kept the puck out. Nice goal, Penny. Pretty good work by both Giro and Jones at the front of the net. The shots are now 10 to 5 in favor of Detroit. The chances for scoring are 4-3, the Red Wings. Trying to step to this one and lay it ahead was the tumbling Chris Draper. Brought back out by the Flyers in a three-on-two, but it's broken up as the pass was right in the Lidstrom position. Anywhere within that man's long reach, plays usually get broken up. Along the wall, they work for it, and emerging with it now is John LeClaire. Claire lays it back across, working in his Terrian, took some lumber, but played it off the goal stick of Osgood. Better off slams one ahead, directed back out by Draper. 
out there and blasted right back around again. Uh, Lindstrom and Murphy played defense for the Brindamore line. They even sent Terrian in on the rush, trying to find offense. The players are sending defensemen in with the forwards. Sandy McCarthy played it up the boards, but it's LaPointe crisply across for Kozlov, who brings it ahead. Slava Kozlov creeping in, pinballed one off the defense, and then put it off the high glass, and it popped into the seats, and play has stopped. That's a good line, isn't it, Mike? When you think of Kozlov, Larry Onoff, and LaPointe, they've been reunited now. They, again, Wendell Clark was on the left side the last couple of games going into this one, and even was in warm-up. But when the game started, Scotty had this line back together. Kozlov and Larry Onoff from LaPointe. LaPointe had some... A muscle he get in front of the net he can he can be tough on the boards but these other two guys talk about finesse and then with Chelios back there things happen Chelios, Chelios was saying that he's a friend of Dick Butkus the former football player good friend to have in yeah. the dark alley <laughs> but they talked a lot about what was going to happen where his career was going to go was he going to get traded he really used Butkus as a sounding board for a lot of the things that were happening to Chris prior to the trade to Detroit and he said, you know what, if it doesn't work out in Detroit, do what I did, try acting. <laughs> Not that bad. Floated to center ice, and on with it now is Larianov. Larianov hands it onto the back. Over the line on the pass to Chelios from the point. Oh, a little shove there. Is that because Chelio shot the puck after the whistle had sounded? Yeah, McCarthy so. came across and said, you know, you're not supposed to do that. Now, if you get a chance, don't do that again, if you don't mind. And Chris said, oh, okay, I won't do that. But Nice, nice paraphrase. <laughs> yeah. There's been some bumping in this one. That's the point on McGillis. Ooh, boy, Wendell Clark there on Luke Richardson. Here's Rube hitting one into a point. And then here's Chelios. The whistle sounds as he got the puck from the wrong side of the blue line. Shot on goal, whistle sounds. And look at McCarthy. It's a beeline. He's going right over to have a word or two with Chelios. We would not presume to suggest that anybody, and they've, they've said this off and on ever since the tragic accident that involved uh, Vladimir Konstantinov and Sergei Konatsukhanov, no one's really going to replace the type of player that Konstantinov was. But in terms of the hitting that he did, I think probably they've gotten a tremendously gifted hitter in Wolf Samuelson when he gets back and helps. Uh, he's a competitive type player that Konstantinov was. Konstantinov, the bigger the game, the tougher the game, the better he played. Wolf Samuelson is very much the same type player. Wolf Samuelson throws a lot of stuff around, makes things happen sometimes against the rules, but he never complains when it's done to him, Mike. He's a real good competitor. Back ahead now comes Dan Dano. Dan Dano lost it off his stick. Jam back on by McGillis. Pinching is McCowan. McCowan kept it alive, but McGillis broke it up. Started back ahead, but a nice reach by the covering defenseman who was really a forward, Iserman. And swung back in by Maltby. Down to the last 90 seconds of the first period. Dan McGillis pestered away by a Fedorov. Tertishny put it back out. Angled back ahead now for Rod Brindamore. Brindamore angles on for a shot by Renberg that's blocked down by the defense. Renberg with a wrist shot. Easily seen and grabbed by Osgood. Coming up at the new Dodge Intermission, Susie Colbert will bring you scores and highlights plus plays of the week. That's all next at Intermission. You know, Chris Chelios is a great acquisition for Detroit for a number of reasons, but also there's no certainty that Nick Lidstrom will be back next year, and that helps give some depth and stability to the defense, too. Can you imagine if Lidstrom does come back for another five years or so, which I, I don't know if he's going to. He and his wife have to make a very tough decision once the season's over. Shot deflected wide from Duchesne, stick. And it's flopped back to neutral ice. Kipped on now for a little pass yeah. that went off the legs of Terry, but he's able to recover. Chris Terrian hands it back across for Duchesne. Gives it ahead to John LeClaire. Shots are now at 10 to 6 at one time. It was 7 to 1, and for the longest time it was that. In favor of Detroit. Worked on by Fedorov. Hands up the wing to Duck Brown. Brown, nice pass back for Murphy. Murphy just waits everybody out, but then had it knocked off his stick. Regathered by Murphy and neutralized, and he'll have to rag it back further. Detroit did a nice job shutting down LeClaire, Brindamore, and Renberg here in the first period. And I thought for Philadelphia, their best line was the Bureau line. They had the best scoring chances, and again, it was off the forecheck. Bureau with the wraparound try, and then with all the congestion off a of faceoff, the puck got to the crease, and Osgood made three saves on slam jam type plays from the crease. I think Detroit's played a smart game and Philadelphia you can sense, Mike, without Desjardins, without Recchi, without Lindros, it's, there's a lot of holes there. Yeah, now, with, with Recchi, he's scheduled to 
have a test tomorrow, what they call baseline test, to see where the brain is after the concussion. I mean, if he passes those tests, he'll start skating immediately with the team. And Desjardins wants to skate this week, coming back from a knee problem he injured uh, last Sunday. They get those three players back later in the week. And Philadelphia have a completely different look to their team. The teams all have these tests prior to the start of the season so that they have comparable numbers. In case someone does come up with a concussion, they can measure it against what the norm is. Big shot by McCarthy is wide. Eight left in the period. Kept alive by Dykehouse. Flip one, and it's brought back out. The Red Wings will have to hurry a shot. It's Draper walking with two to go. Holmstrom for Draper, and the horn sounds to end period number one. Well, what did you think of the first 20 minutes, Josh? I didn't think there was as much pace as I thought there would be. There was some good hitting. Osgood was real good on the two flurries that he had. I thought Detroit was pretty good again on the big line led by Brindamore. Kozlov with the lone goal. The Red Wings ahead 1-0. Susie Colbert will be along with the new Dodge Intermission Report after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. 73 years of hockey tradition here, and the youngsters follow through. Got a little Caesars box there. The owner will be happy with that. He's an alternate, and there is the captain, the worshiper of Steve Eiserman. The jam-packed Joe Lewis Arena, the home team ahead. Gotta think forward first. This new Ford Explorer from your Metro Detroit Ford dealers and I have a lot in common. For starters, we're both powerful and agile. We both handle great, and we can go anywhere. And now lease a 99 Explorer 4x4 for only $304 a month for 24 months. Explorer offers lots of style, features, and safety, too. With all that, it's easy to see why we're both so popular in Detroit. Just ask my fans. Oh, Mr. Eisman, can I please have your autograph? Detroit won Philadelphia nothing at the end of the first 20 minutes. In hits, it was 9-5 to five Detroit, and there were some crunchers. Well, there was a crossbar hit, and then there was a goaltender hit. And that led to some pushing and shoving. And some punching. There's a big one. Buck of a hit by Clark. And there's one by Craig Berube. A lot of board work in this game during the first period. Not real what we call fast pace, but some good board work. Bureau, the centerman for the Philadelphia Flyers, who didn't get a great deal of ice time under five minutes worth, led the Flyers with four shots during those two scrambles around Chris Osgood's goal net. A moment ago, we saw a youngster wearing an Iserman jersey. That's the most popular one here in Detroit. And I think it's going to be for quite a while. Even one of his contracts had the guarantee that he'd be given an office job when he was done here. I don't know. He doesn't seem fitted for the office. <laughs> Seems well, like more of a nice guy. And if I'm not a nice guy, I'm not. Take a look at the Bud Light statistics. Shots on goal, 10-6 Detroit. Scoring chances, 4-3. Faceoffs won, 11-10. Uh, in your circle of friends, do you know anything about that young well, man, Eiserman? I think Steve Eiserman will be awarded his new contract during this upcoming week. His agent is Larry Kelly. He's got to fly into Detroit and sign off on it. Kenny Holland, the general manager of the Red Wings, told me that it looks like it's basically done. I don't know the term or the dollars, but certainly uh, it'll be something that'll be near the top, won't it? Steve Eisenman deserves it for what he's done here in Detroit with his team. He's still on top of his game offensively, defensively, on the ice and off the ice. So congratulations to Steve. It looks like it's basically been taken care of. Here he comes. Eisenman crossing and looking. Oh, man. And so Murphy tried to keep, and it was put back in on an offside. I guess we should congratulate the Illich family, the people who own the Red Wings for being able to uh, strike what looks like a deal with Steve Eisenman. The two of them have certainly been a good family together. Mike and Marion Illich will go into the Michigan Hall of Fame as Sports Persons of the Year in May, along with Scotty Bowman, Kirk Gibson, Bill Ambeer, baseball pitcher Robin Roberts, and others. What an esteemed group of people. <laughs> Is that the who's who? Yeah. Man, and congratulations. That's here in Detroit. Congratulations to all, especially the Illich family and Scotty Bowman. Kurt Gibson just loves, just loves this sport, and he could have been a good player. He, he would have, he would have fit right in with Barubi and the guys today. I think. I heard there was a game here earlier in the season where Jeff Hackett got hooked, the Montreal goalie, and he was going off towards the locker room. Some fans near the visiting bench were yapping down at him, and he started yapping back at him. Guess who one of them was? Kurt Gibson. Kurt Gibson. He would be one of those annoying guys <laughs> yeah. to have out there because he would, he would let you have it all the time verbally, if not physically. Here is Fedorov there. Fedorov trying to jam it on by. Brindamore plays it back ahead. 
Blair tips it as far as center. Ward works it back on. And he has worn skates and done some playing in his time, Mr. Gibson. Out of Michigan State. Played back ahead now for control by Clark. Clark crossing. That one nubbed on back, and Ward can't get to that one as he must drop back defensively. It's Michael Renberg run into by Ward as he passed on to Brindamore, wanting to go by the defense of Chelios. No sale there, but he got a pass fell on for John LeClaire. Brown tried to trip it ahead, came back for Terrian in the shot. Nubbed loose at the front of the net, nicely by Fedorov, and he takes the return pass from Clark. Fedorov had it knocked away. Clark tipped it further. Early stages, second period, a power play goal for Slava Kozlov, the only one here. Brindberg moving in with Brindamore. Brindberg tried to pass and was blocked off by the sprawling Aaron Ward. Mike, what a move by Renberg on Chelios. Chelios tried to run him. Renberg stepped around it, and then Ward moved across, and that's a nice bit of communication with the two Detroit defensemen. He blocked the pass by Renberg. McGill has got it ahead. Sandy McCarthy trying to fight it on. Rolled one to the front that Osgood paddled along. The Flyers seem to be skating a little bit better here to start the second period. This bouncer flown right back and overskated by Larry Onoff, who didn't see it bouncing. Oh, Zella Pukin cut down by a swap from the point that will cost. Well, Detroit did not get the puck deep at the Flyer blue line. The Flyers came back the other way, and this is the result of the play. There's Zella Pukin chopping the feet out. So the Flyers will have a power play. Look at Renberg sidestep this train. Oh, Chelios wanted to nail him. Now Ward, the other defenseman, reads the play and takes away the passing lane as Renberg, Renberg tried to move the puck right in front. There's Chelios stepping up from the neutral zone. He got trapped. Ward moved right across. And then a good back check there, as you see by Kozlov. That is perfect team defense by Detroit. Now LaPointe sits in the box, and the Flyers go on a power play. They're second, I believe, right, Mike? The first one, they had nothing on it. Scotty Bowman talking to his troops at the bench. Zella Pukin is just a coach's dream. He will, if you say we need a little more offense, he'll open it up a little bit. If he says we need you to check this line and it's it's inglorious work, but we need you to do it, he'll say yes. How about penalty killing? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know a story about that. <laughs> so do you. Uh, Victor Tikhanov. What about penalty killing for the Russians, for the Red Army team? No, 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 I get coaches fired when I penalty kill. <laughs> He had two yesterday in, uh, in beating the Rangers 3-1 good Zella Pukin. Kept alive now by Dykehouse. Worked back on on this flyer power play in deep for a centering pass that ricocheted off the skidding Chris Chelios. Brindamore able to tap it around behind. Trouble there for LeClaire. Good challenge from the defense of Chelios again. Moved back up the wall and kept alive by Tertichny. Russian-born defenseman hands back over to Brindamore. Brindamore angled it off for the turning John LeClaire. Player locked up. Brindamore tries to play it around. It's chipped on by Jones down to the last minute and 15 of the power play as of now. Fed back to the point. Tertichny. Little pass across. It's swung in deep by Carl Dykhaus. Comes along now to the Brindamore side and it's spiked back out by Malfi. On the second wave of the power play now, the Flyers bring it on. There's no Lindros on this one either for this game and the next one because of a suspension. Worked back across for a shot by McGillis that's saved by Osgood. Zella Pukin battled on the board by Murphy. It goes around behind for Renberg. Renberg tries to get to the front, and Osgood held it for a stoppage of play. Osgood has been sharp. He has not had a great deal of work. That save he made with his right leg on the wrist shot from McGillis was a beauty. And then this one, another wraparound attempt. The third time in the game, the Flyers have tried the wraparound, and Osgood is there waiting. Look at Renberg behind the goal. Osgood is there waiting. Look at him, he's waiting. I mean, he read the play beautifully. There's the wraparound. Zella Puka tries to jam the puck underneath. The goaltender can't get it done. And Osgood looks really sharp. He was rested about two weeks ago, right? For three or four games, Norm Miracle played very well in goal for the Red Wings, and Osgood has come back and been really sharp. This is Langkow on the faceoff with Iserman. Popped off the shoulder. Iserman tried to steer it further, but instead, it is Renberg. Renberg able to get it back to the point. Shovel shot! It's deflected to the glass as Osgood was reaching, and it got tipped up into the seats, and so play is halted. The flyers pointing that it went off the goal stick of Osgood. I think it did. McGillis, who you're looking at, not many defensemen have great, real good wrist shots from the point. One that used to play here is Mark Howe, also played in Philadelphia. He had a great wrist shot. Look at this. This is the second one during his power play. The whip and the stick. And there's the deflection off of the man in front, I think was Zelopukin or Renberg. And then I think it hit the goalie stick, too. One deflection. Second one, I'm not sure. 
faceoff does stay in the zone. Osgood didn't like the call. So Osgood must be saying, I did not touch it. Went off the flyer player. But the linesman disagreed. And they're still arguing about it. Right now, Gerard Gauthier is talking to the referee. Where's the faceoff? And he overrules. It's going outside. So Osgood complaining here did a good job. So you're going to see Zelopuk could go to the middle. There's the deflection once. Did it hit the handle of the goalie stick? I don't know. Osgood said no. The linesman said no. Now the faceoff does come outside of the zone. Gerard Gauthier, the 28-year veteran of being a linesman in the NHL, 50 years of age, and obviously in tremendous shape. Centering pass is slipped off of Shanahan and cleared back as far as neutral ice for the last 17 of the power play, and Heiserman just like a hawk on McGillis, who played back to Duchesne and then gets it back. This is McGillis bringing it ahead. McGillis posting back in, trying to go through the defense, and it came on goal. Osgood able to spirit it back off the wall and the glass. And so Duchesne drops back, and out of the box is LaPointe. So the Red Wings have killed this one off. Osgood did a nice job, Mike. He flipped the puck high on the glass. Renberg couldn't knock it down. When you're a goalie, get him high off the glass. Kozlov got through, but the puck went through further. Off the back of Langkow, it's walked on by McGillis. McGillis wrists, snagged by Osgood, played right back ahead, but kept alive by Jody Hall. And so it is Dan Deneau connecting back over with Jamie McCowan, and that one knocked down by Bureau. A couple of good keeps by the Flyers, and a pass is knifed away now back to neutral ice by Dan Deneau. Shots are 10-9 in this period. The Flyers with the advantage 3-0, and nearly five minutes have been played. The Red Wings looking for their first shot. This is walked back ahead now by Larry Arnoff. Full strength hockey knocked away, and ahead comes Mark Bureau moving on in. turnover the Flyers skating much better in the second period La Pointe a drive and a save made by Van Beesbrook going back around by Craig Berube leaping out of the way was Kozlov told to do so by the bench because he couldn't see kept him from being involved in the play as they were changing it is Richardson firing it back around Berube reaching but better off there better off tried to muscle it to the corner but it's blocked by Murphy in neutral ice and handed across Ian Lipstrom plays some catch Murphy lays it ahead, off the stick, up Doug Brown, controlled by Clark, and down to the IT goes, a penalty coming up against Philadelphia on the delayed call. It's better off guiding it back to Murphy. Fresh from the bench is Iserman, six attackers now as Murphy is forced back. Ruby really worked on him and eventually got the touch. 14.02 to go in the second, Red Wing power play coming up. Power play Flyers, there's the bulldozing in front. Jones has got to come back and back check and try to take Wendell Clark down, but he does it against the rules. Jones in the penalty box. Detroit has their goal on the power play. Lost by Iserman, but it could not be cleared the length by Terry. Detroit's power play one for one with four shots. The only goal in the game came at 8.31 of the first. Kozlov scoring it from Murphy and Lariano. And he knocked the puck right out of midair on the rebound past Van Beesbrook. Iserman had it knocked away, but they're waiting for it as Nick Lidstrom quickly back over to Chelios. Chelios Threaded it on through Shanahan, played for Wendell Clark, but it was away from him. Clark able to play it on the bounce. Iserman taken care of by Terry, and so it's Shanahan. Iserman at the front is Clark. Iserman looking for Clark, but it's pitched for tie by Steve Duchesne. And it caroms all the way back. I think it went into yeah. the stands or into a bench. Nobody saw it. You know, I saw Lipstrom <laughs> looking down, yeah. and then I looked, and I said, well, he must <laughs> see something I don't. Well, we're all fooled. That hurts the power play by three or four seconds as everybody looked around couldn't find the puck so face off comes all the way back as it was Duchesne who put the puck into the stands 108 to go now on the minor penalty to Jones as he sits boy this Red Wing team they can switch now and just pull out other different players that can all be very very strong on the power play you put Fedorov out there now to take the draw and Larionov is in there he works well with Kozlov but Fedorov was another centerman good on draws. He takes the face off. Nearing the halfway point of the power play. Off the scrum. They try to muscle it to the front. Unable to clear the flyer defense. And Dykhouse is kept alive nicely by Kozlov. Steps through and hands it across. Set up for Lidstrom. Right back across. It comes to the feet to Kozlov. Can't get the shot away. Good work done there by Valeri Zelopukin. And it's cleared down. And Bureau. Those two guys went right to Kozlov before he could release the shot. 
and it's Kellyos, but that one knifed away by Jody Hull, and Dykehouse looks. Flyers just look a little sharper in the first period, don't they? Yeah. Even on the penalty kill here, they're taking away the passing lanes, getting to the shooter quickly. They didn't have much pace to their game in the first period, but Detroit owned them. We mentioned the All-Stars available for both of these teams today, and the Flyers, who are not available because of suspension or injury, cleared but not out, work back over to Chelios. Chelios fakes the drive, then hands across for Lindstrom. Flyers one to punch, and it skips wide to Van Beesbrook, who did not see it because of some of the congestion in front, and it scaled back down. But Klima and McCarty and Koser and Miracle and Samuelson and Gill and Krupp are among the unavailable for Detroit, as well as healthy, Golubovsky and LaPlante. Worked back ahead by Lipstrom and chopped back in deep. So when you're scratching Peter Klima because of the numbers, a guy who was a regular on this team 10 years ago, but you just have a depth of talent. Here is Langkow. Langkow threw onto the back that is controlled by the Red Wings and started ahead. Cruising with it as Draper lays it ahead to Murphy. Full strength action as Draper fires one that went off the glass. Just back along again by Stacy Roos. Around behind, it's taken by the defense of Dan McGillis. Dumped it back over for Renberg. Renberg gave it up. Draper able to control for a moment. Then it's lifted out off the stick of Jones. Coming ahead is Lankow. He's got Renberg. Fed it for him. Blocked by Murphy. Turn right and go. And it's there by Osgood. Not once, but twice. Another chance came. It is Lankow feeding back to the point. Shovel shot deflected. It went wide. And Murphy patrolling on defense for Detroit. Rides for Roost, but instead got Terrian. Kicked along by Jones. Lifted by Roost. Scrambly right now. Holmstrom turned right into a crunch from LeClaire. Dealt back in, and once again, Osgood has to step behind to play it. The Red Wings with just a single shot this period. The Flyers have come up with half a dozen. It's 12-11 Flyers now. And that includes a power play for the Red Wings. I think if there's one player skating better in the second period for the Philadelphia Flyers, it's Renberg. He's really had good strides with skating, and, and he's making things happen here that wasn't there in the first. McClare's try was blocked down by Murphy. It's kept alive now by Terrian. On a cross, and that one handcuffed to Shane. Malty. Chipped back out again by Draper. So we near the halfway point of regulation time. Draper comes to the bench on a change. Both teams are changing. It's laid back across. Grabbed by Zella Pukin and put on goal. Rebound. Oh, another save by Osgood. Stable there. They score! The Flyers have tied the game. Everybody was in on the play. The defenseman jumped up, especially Terrian, and finally the puck was jammed underneath Osgood. Osgood did some good work here. Two or three or four saves, and finally it got just jammed in. Not a lot of help in his own zone. The, the Red Wings were just changing. The Flyers moved up ice here. Here's Zelopukin throwing the puck towards the goal. Look at the defenseman jump in. Terrian's there. He jams away, and then I think Brindamore will get credit for the goal as he found a loose puck. The rain, the, the, Flyers here had Zelopukin on the ice with both Leclerc and Brindamore. It had been Renberg a lot in the game earlier. Now maybe this is because of the penalty kill that just expired. The lines get out of whack. Now here's the play. The puck will be in the crease. And it's Joe. Oh, there may be no goal. Leclerc's left foot was in the his left skate was in the crease. The puck came out of the crease and then put in by Brindamore. I think when we saw that last replay, this goal will be disqualified. Matt Pavlich, 39 years of experience as a linesman, and then later as a replay official here is looking it over, and Rod Brindamore says, you can't rule it out. You know, that. Mike, I think it's going to be disqualified. Yeah, yeah you can see the face uh, expression there, but you know what? This will be reviewed during the offseason. It's got to be changed. I mean, the puck goes over to Brindamore. Leclerc's right there. Watch his skate go in the crease. He doesn't have anything to do with the play. Puck's out of the crease. He's in the crease. The goal scored. Leclerc's got nothing to do with the play. He's supposed to be around the goal net to find the puck. I personally don't like the rule. The rule is called properly here. I mean, I mean, Rod Brindamore is upset, understandable. He's had trouble scoring. One goal in his last 25 games. But the referee went upstairs. They made the call the way the rule's written. They made the right call. It's written that way. But, folks, the NHL is going to look very closely at changing this thing and modifying it. And maybe if there's two referees on the ice for each game next season, the referees can make the decision. That goal, to me, is a good hockey goal. And every team's gone through it this year. Every team's had them taken away. But the rule's in the books, and it will be through the playoffs for this season. Nine of ten shots in this period by the Flyers. 
Their goal wiped out. The Red Wings continue to lead this 1-0. Midway second period, the Brindamore goal wiped out a 1-0 lead for Detroit. It's still upsetting for Brindamore, still talking to the referee as the puck is dropped now. And I can understand some players. It's a tough, tough rule. The hockey news, which really does a good job covering all hockey, they have a great article this week on exactly what it's all about and how the changes could happen and what might happen. Worth reading. Well, the president is there because no harm, no foul was uh, what was used during yeah. the Olympic Games in Nagano. So league officials have been involved with this before. Take a look at this from yesterday. Eric Lindros comes back with a stick. It clipped the face of Peter Nedved, who was cut, I think, at two or three different spots. Coley Campbell, who runs the security and the discipline for the NHL, reviewed it this morning and actually suspended three different players this morning. Uh, Eric being one of them. And you think uh, schedule-wise, here are the players are this afternoon. Eric misses it. The second game he misses is against Carolina. Now, Carolina's in a race with the Florida Panthers for first place in their division. The Panthers think thinking, oh, no. No Lindros to go against the Carolina Hockey Club, the Hurricanes. So... There is ramifications all over the place. Holy Campbell made the call. Eric Lindros is not happy with it at all, but he, I think, calmed down, understands it. He's such a passionate guy, like he just wants to play. He's a great player. All he wants to do is play. A couple other incidents out of yesterday's play resulted in some suspensions today. Brad Warenka missed a rematch with Pittsburgh and Buffalo because of a slash on Brian Holsinger. Here is Eiserman. Fed one in front! Blocked by the defense as Maltby was parked right at the side of the net, and then Maltby shaken up a little bit, gets back up, and he's annoyed. That was Bureau with a good block. What Bureau's played well. He's the, the benefactor of more ice time with Eric Lindros not able to play. Bureau's ice time is doubling. The man has he played hard. Well, the line's <laughs> in the way of Chris Chelios moving up the ice. Trouble there for McGillis. Larianov on him. Chipped around behind. It is thrown in front by Murphy and just grabbed for a stoppage of play. No change in the score here in Detroit. Detroit carries that FOX factor down to Dallas next week. We'll have it for you Sunday, 3 o'clock Eastern, noon Pacific, or the Rangers and the Devils. Detroit, Dallas. That could be a beauty, wouldn't it? Of course, the Rangers and Devils, that's always a beauty. No love lost between either of the sets of teams. How close is Scott Stevens to coming back from the uh, Perhaps injury. today down in Florida. Uh -huh. But the Panthers sure wish they had Pavel Burr. He's going tomorrow to see Dr. Andrews in Birmingham, Alabama, who's a renowned surgeon for, for people who have problems with knees and such. Yeah, Pavel Burr's knee is still bothering him. Zelopuka enrolled one in front. It was deflected and slowed down by Clark, but now dug out behind Sandy McCarthy. Took a jolt, just kept going. McCarthy battling to the corner. Langkow in close too. McCarthy had it knocked away by Brown, tipped out off of Clark. Langkow had it spiked away by Lidstrom. McCarthy tried to burrow his way back in and flung it to the corner. So the Red Wings shift in deep dense to offense, but good forechecking by McCarthy freed it up. Played back deeper by Doug Brown and then on to Lidstrom. Tries the other way for Clark. Hung up in the referee skates for a moment. The follow-up, and you think the Red Wings just want to drive it down the ice and take some of this heat off. They're having a hard time getting out. Yeah, Redberg's back on the line now with both LeClair and Brindamore. That line has to get better as the game moves on here. Brindamore, who thought he had it at 1-1, flung that one back in, and Ward put it back out. Mike, that's two crossbars by the Red Wings on Van Beesbrook. Plus, remember the multi-wrist shot in the right by John Van Beesbrook's chin? We called it chin music. You wonder if Detroit's throwing the puck high on purpose here. It just seems to be happening, happening a lot in this game. Team scout with lots of video. They look it over before the game. Follow-up now comes from Ward. And it's amazing how all the players on the team seem to do it one way. If they think there's a weakness, they just all go cranking there. This one thrown back along by Larry Onoff, glanced off the skates of LaPointe. Angled back ahead and bounced off the Bureau. Kept alive for a moment by the Red Wings, but coming by to take is Steve Duchesne. A lot of experience there, one of six members of this team that is playing for them for the second time. Back ahead with us now comes Jody Hall. Hall met it across for a quick shot that's padded away by Osgood. 
Arian let that go and now comes to the bench for a change in line. Drilled back on by McCowan and letting it go with Kozlov as it's back down for nice and touch up. It's time for our Oracle trivia question. Prior to Detroit's acquisition of Chris Chelios, can you name the last trade made between the Red Wings and Blackhawks? We alluded to the fact that they had done one earlier, but can you uh, remember the trade? We'll let you stew over that one for a moment. Ah, uh, moment's up. Dennis Hall, for future considerations, we've been asking around a good deal about what those future considerations were. And here's some big time shot by Sergei Fedor. See the puck on edge? I think that fooled Van Beesbrook. Could have dipped down and caught the crossbar, but stayed out of the net. Brian, did you, were you able to figure it out? Well, Jerry Green of the Detroit News was asked, and he's been here since 56. <laughs> Got his block down. Another try, and Osgood grabbed that one and held on. And Bud Lynch, who's been with the team since 49, and they both checked the book to verify that it had, in fact, happened. And we've asked the Red Wings to research it. And, and, and at that time, the two teams were owned by the same family. Oh. So the future considerations could have been a golf game, or you just don't know. Maybe a bus. But I'm sure Dennis Hall would have researched yeah. this, might know, yeah. and would be delighted to tell us that in a very well, amusing yeah. way. Yeah, one of the best after-dinner speakers in the entire North American continent is Dennis Hall. Paul Bureau beat Roost on a last face-off. And that led to a shot on goal. This time, Roos comes back and wins it for Detroit. Angled around behind, and it's Jamie McCowan up with it there. Allen with a pass. It's chipped high and out of play. 6.03 left in the second. Red Wings won nothing. In 1951, six Red Wings were sold to the Chicago Blackhawks for 75 grand. One of them was a member of the Stanley Cup squad the year before, Max McNabb, who later had a very long career in this sport. But again, it was that interesting family thing with the Norris family. The Blackhawks needed some guys, I guess. Six of them went. Seventy-five grand came back the other way. So you're you're sort of saying that it was there just might have been some off-color, shady type. Well, there there happened. might have been. Now historians <laughs> say that there were, but I I wasn't following the game back then, unfortunately. My teams were the Fort Wayne Comets in the IHL. I followed them closely, but not these big guys. By the way, uh, one of the suspensions that we failed to mention, Ryan Vandenbush misses today's game for Chicago because of a headbutting incident with Christoph Oliva of New Jersey yesterday. So that's a one-game suspension. Colin Campbell's just done a marvelous job, and you will get general managers who have who have had players suspended who will say that. It was interesting today. I'm talking to Bobby Clark, who of course runs the Philadelphia Flyers. I asked him about the Lindros thing, and he said, "Well, you know, this, that, this, that." He says, "If I can honestly tell you that one of the best things that's happened this year, this particular year, is the job that Coley Campbell's done. And don't forget that Coley Campbell's a raw rookie at at working with management at that level with the NHL. So there you go, Coley Campbell for Rookie of the Year." <laughs> Puck swirled back around and it went between the point men and down. And of course, Malpe has been suspended, Fedorov has been suspended, and people in Detroit are saying, Holy Campbell used to play and coach here? Doesn't mean a thing. Brought back ahead now by Langkow. Langkow flips it back in. In deep to play it is Lidstrom, away from Zelopukin, up the half boards, kept alive for a fling to the front of the net by Bureau. Walked back out by the Red Wings, and it's Larry Murphy. A little bit too far for Malpe. Adam Burke tried to play it further. Kept alive, though, by the Red Wings, but now able to step away and walk it back out as Langpow left it, but it is swung back in by Dan McGillis. 5-10 to go, second period. Red Wings ahead, 1-0. The Flyers had a goal disallowed. The Red Wings have rung a couple off the crossbar. Here is Fedorov motoring in. Big shot by Clark, and it went wide. Brown put it around behind. Fedorov tried to center. Fedorov twisting with it again, wanting to shake Duchesne. Fedorov pivots with it now. Fedorov dropped it behind. Brown reaches, centers, but no one there except Orange and Black. And Rod Brindamore, the captain of that team today, and in the next game, gave it across for an offside call. 4.42 left in the second. Red Wings one, Flyers zip. We mentioned Iserman's popularity here. We can't really forget about any player, but Brendan Shanahan, the leading left wing goal scorer in the 1990s in the National Hockey League, as his fans here too. Collectively, they love the team, but they picked out individuals and they saluted Chris Chelios that way in his very first game on Wednesday. Moving in now is Doug Brown. Triple across, and it's knifed away by the defense, kept alive by Chelios. Around off of Brown, but Wendell Clark. 
Mark banked it around behind, but it's taken by Terrian and crisply fed through for Brindamore. He shifts it the other way and up the wing to LeClaire. Drops it on back. Renberg charges to the net. Fed one to the slot and a shot knocked down. Scramble! And a backhander by Renberg is turned aside by Osgood. And a penalty. Penalty will be coming up against Detroit, and so Philadelphia on the attack will get a power play. Again, a four-man rush. Duchesne jumped in and made it happen. It's the Flyers Renberg trying to find the loose puck, and you watch Dougie Brown's leg come in, and he just sweeps it right through. And trips Renberg. Now that's the call. Brown goes for a couple of minutes. Obstruction. Oh, maybe that was the call. It's obstruction holding the stick. With more of a trip to me. Doug Brown oh, is in the box. The Flyers have a power play. Trailing one zip. 0 for 2 on the power play with two of their 18 shots in the game coming on the man advantage. They've outshot Detroit 18 to 12 in the game. In this period, 12 to 1. Uh, check that, 12 to 2. Their advantage on Detroit in this period. Now ahead comes Lipstrom on a shorthanded break. Cancel that by Dykhouse, but Dykhouse will pay for that one. The most upset player right now is Zelapuka. He was right in center ice and had the puck and couldn't find it. And when Zelapuka couldn't find it, Lipstrom was just like a shark. He read the play, jumped in there, and then Dykhouse pulled Lipstrom down. Zelopukin couldn't find the puck right near center ice. And as the whistle sounded, Mike, I looked right down at him and he was upset. There's Zelopukin. Where's the puck? Where's the puck? I can't find it. Now watch Lidstrom read it. He just takes off. He's gone. Now Dykhaus is a defenseman striding across. He's a good skater. But there, with both Jones and Dykhaus, Lidstrom was trapped and pulled down to the ice. So the Zelopukin play hurts. His team now goes from a power play to a four-on-four, four and Dykehouse sits. So Roger Nielsen, his team having three consecutive wins, sees them having shut down a little bit since that goal was disallowed. They went through about five to ten minutes with only one shot on goal in that stretch, but having played much better here in the second period. Rod Brindamore in to take the draw opposite Steve Eiserman. Boy, you put together an all-star team of heart guys. You'd want those two on it as two of your centers, wouldn't you? Yeah, very, very hardworking players and very good at the mechanics of the game. Good instincts, smart, intelligent players away from the puck. And those are the types of players you like on the ice when you're in a four-on-four -four situation. It is Dan McGillis. It's Osgood. Then Murphy. Three and a half left in the second. It'll be a while for that Red Wing power play, barring further penalties. A minute 22 from now. Trying to step ahead of Shanahan. Pretty good work in rolling him along the fence by positioning the first gear man. Renberg back ahead. Brindamore. Tried for Renberg. And then Brindamore again. Now the Red Wings have changed. They have fresh forwards on the ice. Angled on back for the control by Murphy. Brindamore has been out there quite some time. Renberg was able to change. Now Brindamore goes to the bench and completes the change. This is Kozlov. Wanting to go by. Kozlov around behind, away from Duchesne, then from Terrian, and he's roll blocked to the glass and thrown away. Puck comes back to the point, Dan Dano able to hold it. Dan Dano back over for Chris Kelly. In 35 seconds, the power play will be 21 seconds long, and it'll be Detroit. Kozlov in the last roughly two and a half minutes of the second period. Kozlov with the only goal in the game that has counted. Terrian trickled one ahead. Kept alive by John LeClaire. Claire fed it on back, and Terran will have to drop further. Larianoff comes to the bench. So does Chelio. Meanwhile, it's angled back on for Jody Hall. Wanted to knife it to the front, but wiped out. And it's Fedorov. In two seconds, Brown will be out. He is out. The power play begins. Moving in, it's Fedorov trying to pull by the defense, but no sale from Burke. Fedorov around behind. Tried to center, and that one kicked by Burke. Taken over by Brown. Ten left on the power play. On back to Murphy. Crisply back over to Lindstrom. Wrist one side of the net. Fedorov. What will he do? Fed to Clark. And it went off of him. Good defense by Hull. And out of the box is Dykhouse. And it's built, been killed off with 100 seconds left in the period and an offside pass. There's only been one goal scored in this game. It was a Kozlov power play goal. You'll see the shot by Murphy get away from the glove of Van Beesbrook. And Kozlov just tapped it. He bunted the puck in right out of midair. The Flyers thought that maybe it was a stick above the crossbar. It was not. And the goal was allowed to stand. Now watch Wendell Clark, number 71 there, 
get up after being knocked down by Burke, and Jody Hall will go right back to him. See Jody Hall, the forward? There. Man, that's a good back-checking job. He went right to Clark. Clark was about to let go of that great wrist shot that he has and couldn't. Jody Hall was all over him. Good defensive play. In a game like this, the Flyers, without Recky and, and Lindros up front, without Desjardins on the blue line, they're really trying to play their pace that they want. And I think they've had that. This has not been the Detroit-type pace that they like to have. Detroit's a quicker team. And here in the second period, when only two shots registered, they haven't had that Detroit pace, that Detroit speed. Coming up at the new Dodge intermission, Susie Colbert will bring you scores and highlights, plus the NHL insiders, including my partner. That's all next at intermission. The NCAA Men's Hockey Championship will reach the Final Four next weekend. Michigan State is still in the running. Northern Michigan, Michigan, and Michigan State all started. The NCAA Women's Hockey Alliance had their champion, and what a week for A.J. Malesko of the women's Olympic team. She was named winner of the Patty Kazmaier Award for being the best college player in the country and set up the overtime winner for Harvard in the championship. Oh, what a, what what a, a year. great run. Isn't that oh, something? Man. The Hobie Baker Award winner for men's hockey will be announced this next week, too. So lots of exciting times in college hockey right now. There's a tip aside by Osgood, grabbed off now by Larry Murphy, and cranked back in by Shanahan, and that one just floated through the air for Van Beesbro. Tip back to neutralize. Larry Murphy has it. Lobs it back on, but it's Collard, and worked further by Bureau, but then spun along for Iserman. Here's Iserman trying to go by Richardson. Meanwhile, it is Jones stalemating, so it can be lobbed back out and down the ice by Mark Bureau. It'll be an icing touch-up. Great move by Eisenman. The speed that he has to go try to go around Luke Richardson and Van Beesbrook challenged with his goal stick, and I like that. Goaltenders have a have a, an advantage if they use it. And that's the goal stick to read plays. Look at Eisenman go around Richardson, find the puck, and then bang. And Richardson did a good job trying to get back to Eisenman. Watch what Eisenman does with the puck. He slides it between the stick and the feet there, and then goes around to get the shot, and Van Beesbrook didn't sit back. He was right out there with a goal stick extended, and Eisenman never did get a clean shot on goal, even though it was a terrific effort. See the impressive numbers of Steve Eisenman as he rests so that Draper takes this face off with 46.9 to go. Stacy Roost is out with him, and off this face off, it is sent around by Duchesne. What a crunch on LeClaire by Chelios. Chelios is hurting. Yes, he is. Well, he's going right to the bench. He threw his shoulder into LeClaire. He's been opposite LeClaire a lot in this game, and that stunned him a little bit. He had trouble striding, and I don't know if it's the wind in his body or if it was a shoulder or what, but he is hurting. He's reaching for his back right now. Renberg with 22 to go, tries for LeClaire. Wanted Renberg, got Terrian in deep. He's hit, and the puck knocked loose by Terrian. They battle to the front of the net, and it's Murphy. Murphy steering it back for Stacy Roos. The Red Wings might get an odd man rush out of this. Moving in and shooting one with Holmstrom, and it's held by Van Beesbrook. Oh, boy, Chris Chelios is hurting. I think he wrenched his back. Look at him. See his left hand going and reaching back there? He stood up, and he, st he has stood up a lot in the neutral zone in this game. Remember, Renberg sneaked uh, by him earlier in the game. Here, see that? Oh, you can see he turned his body and led with his hip and his back. And there you could see it hit him. Now he could hardly keep his balance. And he couldn't stride. See how he's having trouble striding? He's bent over, and he's, oh, man, is he hurting. He gets to the bench, and immediately the training staff was there to meet him. And it was the in behind, like by the left hip. Sometimes your hip bone gets hit with something. You get a bone bruise on the hip bone itself. They call it a hip pointer. Man, does that hurt, and does it hurt for a long time? Well, it may have been a costly hit and a costly period for the Red Wings, but we'll keep you advised as best we can on any update, and we'll watch for Eli uh, Chelios' return in the third. That's Wendell Clark back there with that wrist shot. Fedorov wants to try and feed him. Now, is there been going to be a positional change? Yeah, Wendell goes in to take the draw because Fedorov got tossed. Bureau, a lot of ice time in these first two periods, takes the draw for Philadelphia. Help back for Lindstrom. Bad stop, Ben Beesbrook. Yeah, Wendell Clark with the win. Wow. Oh, and LaPointe came in to say, how do you do? And two periods have been played. one nothing the score. Detroit ahead of the Philadelphia Flyers at the end of two periods. We hope you're enjoying it. We sure are. Susie Colber will be along with the new Dodge Intermission Report after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. 
One nothing Bud Light stats through two periods of play. 2015, the shots Philadelphia. A second period, 14-5 in the scoring chances, 7-5. The teams are at full strength as we begin the third period. Nick Lidstrom with it for Detroit. Banks it back off for Holmstrom. Triple it in, but this is taken by Carl Dykhouse. Pursued and hooked at by Draper. Dykhouse tumbled to the ice, but muscled at the center and then down in a collision with Jones, who gets up and seems to be okay. One of the concerns for Detroit was the health of Chris Chelios at the end of that period. Buck angled back to the corner. Coming out is Murphy, and he fired one that rocketed high in the air and then was stifled by Hall and tipped back to neutralize, but jabbed back in again on a delayed offside. Chelios is on the bench. Actually, just jumps on the ice now to play his first shift with Aaron Ward, his defense partner, so he seems to be okay. He threw a body check into John LeClaire right at center ice during the second period. He turned his body at the, at the point of impact and seemed to bang his left hip. Now, you mentioned Jones got blindsided, knocked down, I think, by one of his own teammates. I think it was and he's hurting. Now, here's the play with Chelios. You see how he, he led with his left hip, and then all of a sudden, it just hit him right there. It just hit him, and he couldn't stride. And he had some sort of spasm towards the left side, but he's okay. Jones right now is going underneath the stands and back towards the Flyers' locker room, and he's noticeably limping. Detroit right back. Brown hands over for the turning. Fedorov chipped back along for Clark, but instead grabbed off and brought out by Duchesne. Stokes it over for control by Renberg. Renberg fed one in front right there. It's Brendan Oh, and it was deflected wide of the goal. Now it's Fedorov bringing it back out. Fedorov plays a little catch with Brown. Coast in, got it over on the wing for Brown. Shot that's deflected wide. Wendell Clark scaled it behind. Brown tried to touch it to the front, and it came airborne, and it's chopped by Fedorov off of Van B's broken a big awe, goes up from the crowd. Zipped along for the night down by Renberg, played by a high stick, and so the clock is stopped. Brindamore with a close play. Wendell Clark was back-checking with Brindamore, and Brindamore went to the far side, the right side of Osgood, and couldn't finish the play as he did, tried to tie it at one. Watching Wendell Clark, he's paying some attention to the defense. Well, playing with Detroit. Detroit feels as a team they're better defensively. Here's the play where you're going to see Jones, who's right in front of the net there. Watch him come over to this area. Here's the shot. Oh boy, that's that shot hit one of the players. Actually, Jones was had his feet knocked out from under him, right at the flyer bench. And he didn't see it coming. He's hurting. Draper was hooking Dykehouse and eventually caused him to go off balance. And I think that was the guy that wound up going into Jones. Whether that was the play that caused the injury, we don't know. This is Langkow. Langkow threw it in front, and that one cut off and sped back out to neutralize by Jamie McCowan. Jones has just now gotten back to the players' bench area. Right in front of that, it's thrown on by the Flyers. Dandeneau back up to Eisenman. Eisenman laid it up the wing. Nice pass on to Shanahan. Shanahan lopped one. Maltby chopped at it and then was buried by the check of Dan McGillis. Back on now comes McCarthy. Thrown away by McCowan and brought right back by Eiserman. Eiserman pivots now. Eiserman wedged off enough that this is open ice for Zelopukin. Zelopukin got two yesterday, trying to work his way by, but was cut off by the defense of Lidstrom. Red Wing shift to offense again. Kozlov with it. Two and a half minutes played, third period. The shots are 20 to 16 in favor of Philadelphia. Kozlov's power play goal midway in the first period is the only one. Midway in the second, Rod Brindamore scored on a net mouse scramble, but that was disallowed for a man in the crease. A drive by Larianov went wide. Thrown along by Murphy. But it is Dykehouse. And across two lines. Talked about the disallowed go a goal, Mike. The Flyers were working, trying to find a way to score, and John McClure's foot was in the goal crease before Brindamore scored. So it was disallowed in one of those in the crease in the crease situations. Goal disallowed. 39 goals for John LeClaire, and he's been joined this afternoon by Tony Amonte of Chicago, who has two in the game with St. Louis. That now gives Amonte 39 on the season, and I understand that he has a clause in his contract that if he hits 40, and it certainly looks like he will, then he gets some more years and some more cash automatically added on to the existing deal. So good luck to Tony Amonte, who's a good guy, a terrific goal scorer, and a fun player to watch play the game. Blackhawks under new coach Lauren Mollickton are a 500 team. They were sub 500 before at 5, 5, and 4 entering the afternoon. Chris Chelios did some good things today. The Hawks head coach. 
former goaltender, by the way. Part of the union that never seems to end. Osloff tries to work it ahead. It is now Larry Onoff pitching it around behind. A point run into by Luke Richardson. A couple of big guys wedge up along the boards. Larry Onoff comes by two. Out of the stalemate, emerging with it to control is Mark Bureau. Bureau laid it ahead, but it went off the stick of Sandy McCarthy. Lobbed back further for play by the defense. But Detroit takes over and play between the blue lines right now a lot. Bureau's played almost 10 minutes through two periods. That's more than he usually gets in a full game. So it'll be a test for him to see how he works in the third period. Can he keep the level up? I think Bureau's played real well today for the Flyers. Draper could not control as he started in. He was in before the puck, so it's offside. We'll be back. Another of the Michigan College products out of Western Michigan, Keith Jones, is back at the bench. John LeClaire playing opposite Roost on the left side over there. LeClaire through two periods. He's only had the one shot on goal, and that was very early in the first period. A bad angle shot that Osgood made the save on. Buck flown on the bounce and tipped across. Aaron Ward out of the University of Michigan gets back onto Holmstrom. Turn back in is LeClaire out of the University of Vermont. Check Holmstrom. Tired of the college references yet. Rod Brindamore, Michigan State. Lays it ahead for Renberg. School of Hard Knocks in Sweden. Centering pass went across the net. Mouth. Another try. Fought off by the defense. Scramble. They raise their sticks. And pointing to the area of the net is Dvorsky. The light is on. I hate to say this, but was Renberg, did he have his knee inside the goal crease? Maybe the puck was in there before and stayed in there. And if, if so, it's a 1-1 game. Gerard this, Goche was right at the crossbar to say something to Paul Dvorsky. Let's watch. Puck's through the crease. Osgood is down. There's Renberg with the backhand. The puck's in the crease. Crawls up the goaltender and over the line. That's a good goal scored by the Flyers. We're tied at one. Renberg really hustled. Here's John LeClaire. The big line finally got something here. He pushes Draper to get free. Pucks across. Now watch the puck just roll right down the leg of the goaltender Osgood. Renberg was shoved in. He never got into the crease anyway until the puck was already in there. That was a good play by John LeClaire. It looked like Draper was all over him, and he just shoved Draper to get loose, and he got a little bit of the puck, which allowed the puck to stay alive for the Philadelphia Flyers, and they tie it up here in the third period, one apiece. You saw Paul Dvorsky, the referee, in that replay, pointing right at the area of the net. It looked good to him. It did to the replay official, and so play goes on in a 1-1 tie. Teams are at full strength. Over four and a half minutes played here in the third period of our contest this afternoon on Fox. We're glad you've joined us. There's a penalty coming up. It's going to be against Detroit. The Flyers have just tied it. They got a chance to break the tie with a man advantage. Dandeno gets the holding call. Renberg had scored the goal out of the net mouse scramble that tied the game. And there you see the hold on Valeri Zelapuka. Renberg's goal came from John LeClaire at 421 to tie the game up. An important penalty kill for Detroit. An important power play for Philadelphia in this 1-1 third period tie. And these Red Wings have 13 shorthanded goals. Four different players have at least two apiece. Only the Canucks and Vancouver have more than Detroit on the season. So they're always dangerous on the penalty kill. They have Brown and Fedorov out right now. Iserman will be coming shortly on the second wave of the kill. Big shot by LeClaire. Just stuffed out and deflected to the corner. Turned along by Fedorov. Kept alive by Rod Brindamore. Hey! Around for LeClaire. Centered but off of Larry Murphy. Murphy shovels it ahead and moves out on this rush. It is Brown up the wing and a three on two. Flip one across the net mouth wide. Flyers try to play it further and it's LeClaire nudging it on back for Steve Duchesne. Eiserman. He comes on the ice with Shanahan. Detroit keeps their pairs together. Eiserman will be on in a moment when Fedorov goes off. Ward wheeled it along and it careened into the seats off one of the flyers and so play halted with a minute two still to kill on the Dandeno minor. To Roger Nielsen, when you look at the other team's penalty killers, Detroit usually starts with Fedorov and Brown and then come back with Eiserman and Shanahan. And a power play 0 for 3 with the two shots and added to that the one goal disallowed. Lankow, who has played some point on the power play for the flyers, goes to center ice. And how about this? They got big. Sandy McCarthy out there for the power play. He's got a 
fairly decent set of hands regarding handling the puck and getting scoring chances for a big rugged guy. But I think if the Flyers set up, you know where he's going to go. Class, anyone? <laughs> I see hands. How about the front of the net, John? Good, good guess, Mike. Okay, and I'll tell you, you what, it's going to be like trying to move an oak tree out of there if the puck gets set up. 55 left on the minor penalty. Flyers second unit on the power play. Their first unit, some good skilled players. Their second unit without the Jardin and without Recky and without Lindros. It's a different look. Boy, some good scrapping by Shanahan on McCarthy. Played back across to Sandy McCarthy. Laid it back over for Tertishny, who has to drop back. Off there by Shanahan. Started back ahead and then peeling off his dike house. What Scotty, work? Scotty Bowman wanted Shanahan to skate. Skate, skate, skate. Earlier in the season, he felt he wasn't skating yeah. enough, especially playing the left side. Now, here on this penalty kill, he's really had his feet moving. And he and Eisenman worked perfect in tandem. Two goals and assists in a fight in last week's game at Philadelphia.